Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Tesali from Elena Hazigeneva. Fingers crossed. I hope it was at least close. Um, and I believe we've done one of Elena's before. And I think that one I just said Elena H because I didn't want to try this time. I've uh, been doing some searching on pronunciations and uh, gosh, I hope I'm close. All right. And if not, um, I apologize. <laughs> All right. This is a neat tangle and it is a grid pattern. I'm going to start off. I'm going to do like an outer border here. And I think just because it looks so neat in, um, you know, with more than just it being a four square, I'm going to do a 16 square. And really, this tangle is, I mean, it is a four square tangle. So by that, I mean, as we do it, we're going to focus in on these four squares at a time. But starts off with, once you have your grid done, then just a small dash, a little straight line in the center, or as close as you can to it, of each box. And then this one, Depending on how you work, there are two ways you can approach it. First way is just looking at looking at it as a four square and then moving on to the next one. So we'll do that first. So once you have all of your dashes, then we're going to alternate the way we do these. Kind of like if you think of it like a checkerboard, we'll do the same thing diagonally. These, uh, these curve lines going in the same direction uh, every other square. And, you know, alternating and you know, so there's nothing, um, it's not going to be the same on the adjacent squares. So I am on the, oh, let me turn a little bit. Okay. So this is the upper left and I'm going to start in the upper right corner and just drawing a curve line down to that little dash that we put in. Uh, to the closest side and then on the other side and you could i mean if you want to flip your flip your tile feel free um but we're going to go from the other side of that dash to this corner and also a curve line so uh going the opposite direction so let's see if i curved it this way if i flipped it yeah kind of go in the same direction so up to you and i share that so that way if you find difficulty know that you can just change it. actually we'll do it right here so uh, we're going to go on the diagonal. So same here, turning the tile, and it's the same same thing all over again, like that. Okay. So again, whichever way works for you. Then on the uh, the adjacent tiles, the empty tiles, we're going to uh, it's the same thing, but it's it's just mirrored. So we're going to do this curve line this way, and then. And actually, if we flip it, I'm, I'm almost thinking that that's easiest. Except then you have a lot of flipping back and forth. Okay. And then here, same thing. And also, feel free if, you, if need be. Well, actually, it, it, it's not necessarily necessary. Up to you. Uh, but feel free, you know, if you end up not meeting, just extend that little dash line as you need to. Okay. So that is the first step. Now, one thing that I will tend to do, and it just depends on the tangle. So this is the other way you can do it. Uh, imagining that, uh, you know, we'll see, this is all done. But you could, because here we're going to start again with this same direction. Ooh, actually, we can split it up even further. And we're going in the diagonal, or whichever way is best to think about it. You know, we have one, skip, do, skip, like that. And then here, this, skip. Here, and this one, and I apologize because because I'm doing this uh, 
because I decided to kind of do it both ways. So you could do it this way, then flip. That made it so curved. It's nice to get them nice and curved, though. You know, and this is one where once you have one done, and then you can see them where you're mirroring it, and sometimes that's helpful. All right, then we're going to do the flip side. Like I said, if this works for you, great. I, I share it because it might. And I like to give everyone options because we all work differently. Yep. And then you could flip or, you know, just you're doing the, uh, if you end up doing it without flipping the tile, you just have to remember that, well, I'm doing the curve the other way. This one is going out. This one's going in. So whichever way works best. And like I said, seeing the mirror is like, oh, well that, you know, that tells me I don't have to think as much because I can see what I'm mirroring. And one, one reason for doing it this way, where you're doing the same stroke and flipping the tile is because then if you're using this for, um, the meditative mindfulness aspect, the more repetition, the better. So this is just, it's one stroke, turn, same thing, you know, and that's it. Less thinking, more repetition, and that is good. All right, next step after you have that done is we're going to aura the outside. So you see these neat, neat patterns. And let, this is like what I said, it's a, it's a four squared pattern. So we're going to aura in the four squares. So we're going to do the outside of this whole pattern. So just like that, coming from the, uh, you know, the grid line like this. And again, you know, however it works best for you to go. I like to, I do like to take little, do them in little snippets, lifting up my pen. I used to think that, uh, like doing an aura, you had to do it like in one stroke. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. And you don't have to do that. It's actually, I think this is a little bit nicer because then you can be very careful and very deliberate and focus on what you're doing. And of course, we're doing the inside here. So again, looking at this as four squares, neat how it creates one in the center too, as well as on the sides. But know that we are auraing the outside of these four squares. So here we're going to also aura. I love this one because in the way that she's done it, because it's, it's so ornate, but she broke it down, deconstructed it into elemental strokes, keeping it simple and nicely repetitive. And, you know, this is one that, uh, you know, it's one of the it kind of afterwards, it's like, wow, I did that. That's neat. <laughs> Especially for those of us that, uh, well, we can call ourselves a Zantangle artist. But when you don't uh, really have any arch training, these kind of things are so extra cool. All right. So now that you have it, the last step is decorating. And if you take a look at the For More Inspiration link, uh, you will see just a couple ideas. Um, this is from, uh, well, this is just from her Flickr account. I'm going to actually, you know what? I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put both links because I found it on Tangle Pattern. So I will put that in there. Because there's a number of ideas that, that you could use. I mean, you could just leave it blank. You could, um, yeah, it looks like, yeah, Linda had done some playing with this. Uh, so lots of different ideas. But I'm going to follow uh, uh, Elena's step out. And we're just going to do some straight lines. So I'm going to start in this, in this box. And we're going to do the outside here. And just draw some straight lines. And this is a neat effect especially if you keep your pen just like tickling the, the surface. 
So we're going to alternate here as well. So this is going to be on the outside, the next one. And this one, think in, in the boxes. This one we're going to do on the inside. Another neat thing about doing these kind of straight lines is it uh, disguises the grid. And so we're just going to keep alternating that in this row. So outside, inside. Also, if you uh, keep it at a light touch versus a deliberate on purpose stroke, it seems like it makes it a little, a lot more forgiving if, if your lines are, you know, like that uneven or a little wiggly because it's light. It's just a, it's just a background texture. All right. So in one row, you're going to have it one way. Then here, we're going to alternate. And you can do this a couple ways. Sometimes I like to come from that grid line so that way I can aura it and then continue on, although I usually like to have my uh, have my pen coming, doing it from another direction. And actually, if I, let me try just turning the tile. And then, so here is inside, and then this one is going to be outside. And we will just continue this for all of them. And so I mentioned, you know, I like to have my pen essentially like underneath the line I'm oaring. It's just, even though the pen is really thin, there's just something nice about seeing what you're oaring versus like here, uh, the other way I was, uh, my pen was kind of in the way. I mean, it's not anything tragic, but sometimes it's just nice. And that we want to make things as comfortable for ourselves as possible. And okay, so let me I will finish this up. And while I'm doing that, let me mention in the description section, I already mentioned uh, finding Elena's work that is listed under for more inspiration. So I'll have my version of the step out and then Elena's uh, links to her work. Uh, and, you know, and, that, and this one, I'll, I'll put uh, the Tangle Patterns link and then one to her Flickr. Uh, you, you can find it in the Tangle Patterns link. It's just sometimes they're hard to find because it's it's uh, buried in the words uh, in the text that she has. So I will put it there for your convenience. Then underneath that are ways to connect with me if you wish. If you enjoy my style, uh, would love to have you uh, join me for uh, online classes. I do live online classes almost twice a week. I have uh, every Thursday, I do something called Tangle Time where we take a tangle kind of like this and we will explore it, play with it. Um, I may pair it with another tangle just depending on what I think we can get done in an hour's time. And we have a lot of fun. The only thing that uh, that ties us together is, is the tangle. So then we see everybody's uniqueness, how they how they decorate it, what they might want to add. It's uh, and I always share uh, the artwork from whoever originated the tangle and any samples that they have, just as inspiration. Uh, and then it's just fun to see what everybody does. So would love to have you join. Information on on that as well as the paid classes are on my website, and we have a really wonderful uh, tangle addicts. Uh, Facebook community link for that is also in the description section. Um, lots of fun and would love to have you join us. Uh, for shading on this one, hmm, you know what, let's do, let's do this, let's do, let's, let's make these the star and I'm going to just put some graphite, Even, I'm going to do it all the way through on this, let's just see what it looks like. We'll put this one in the middle because I'm also thinking of, well, I might as well go ahead and do it <laughs> on these outside bits. So we'll make the, uh, the four pop. I had first thought only to do some shading where I put the lines because that has a neat effect. 
going to change my mind. There's all kinds of ways that you could play with the shading or like I said, just, uh, you know, you don't have to have shading either. And Tortillon. Oh, that one looks good. Okay. And I'm just going to bring it out a little bit because this is small. Yeah, so what's fun is you could do this either way. So like I said, I'm, I'm making these ones pop out, but you could do this opposite where you do the shading on the inside of these four and make the other ones pop. completely up to you and again I'm not I'm not bringing out the graphite too much because I want to have some of the natural tile color open or left so that way then it gives it that kind of you know puffy look yeah that looks kind of cool all right well if you enjoyed this would love to have a thumbs up or a like feel free to share it and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel and you again you enjoy my style would love to have you be um, be a subscriber to the youtube channel of course that is free um, i mentioned already all, all the stuff in the description section again would love to have you join me for uh for some of the online classes come check me out for free and if you like it enough you know maybe you'll take a paid one uh, one I also have a, a subscription club so for those that really like it and uh, want to have uh, all access to whatever paid content I put out um, I have that as well and information is on the website and if you have trouble finding anything uh, let me know you can either connect here through the comments or um, I believe there is a, uh, a link on the website in order to, to connect or through Facebook or or even Pinterest I'm not on the Pinterest as much or, or not Pinterest um, Instagram as much as I'd like to be, but I am there uh, at least maybe every other day or so. All right. So with that, thanks so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.